I want to bring in CKE Restaurant CEO Andy Puzder joining us. He's also a member of Trump's Victory Committee. Andy, good to see you again. What's your take on all of this good in terms you, of immigration? From a business standpoint, what do you want to see in terms of immigration policy? Look, I think, I think what Donald Trump's laid out is really very effective. One, we're going to secure the border. We need to secure the border, and we can be compassionate and still protect our sovereignty. Number two, we're going to enforce our laws. And when, when did we get to the point in the political process where a presidential candidate uh, has, to, has to promote the fact that he's going to enforce the law? But he's going to enforce the law, which I assume means that he would cut back on visa overstays, which are a big problem. Uh, third, we're going to get rid of sanctuary cities, which are an offense not only to the rule of law, but to our federal system. Right. And lastly, he wants to promote E-Verify, which is a great system. We use it in our restaurants. It allows employers to know whether or not they're hiring people that are here illegally, because sometimes people will have forged documents. So those are really good proposals. I think it's a great start, and it's a great way to go. I, li I like the fact that you're actually using that program at the restaurant, yes. so you're actually seeing an impact. I want to get your take, Andy, on this escalating push for campaign money on both sides. Both of the nominees are ramping up their efforts to raise money after Hillary Clinton raises $19 million in a single week following a three-day high-profile fundraising blitz. Does Donald Trump need need more of these closed door star studded fundraisers that Hillary Clinton has been doing how is he going to keep up with her on the money end of things well you know look you always want to, you always want to have groups of people that are going to contribute large amount, large amounts of money so Donald Trump could use more of those but really they cut back on your credibility if you're going in and saying you know we're going to regulate Wall Street we're going to tax the rich how can you go to these meetings take take incredible amounts of money from the very people that you claim to ordinary Americans you're going to be punishing. It doesn't make any sense. And Donald Trump does not want to put himself in that position. I think he needs to maintain his credibility, raise money the way he's been raising it, which has been very effective, right. and we need to use those dollars to go on air. So I, 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 I would prefer that he not have these little closed-door you know, meetings I with see. people that... Uh, yeah, that, that he claims he's going to try and punish. Right, yeah. that, that makes sense. That, Kevin. Andy, is it resonating with the business community, uh, Trump's economics plan, given the fact that he's talking about uh, lowering taxes? Um, it, it seems like there there's, tends to be a disconnect that it's not really sticking with a lot of the voters and a lot of the people in the economy right now. Well, if there's anybody that his plan's not sticking with, they're not paying attention. Because lowering, he's got a pro-growth tax plan, which is exactly what we need. We've had now three quarters where GDP's averaged about 1%. You can't see income go, incomes go up. You can't see jobs created. You're not going to have prosperity if you try and use the tax code to redistribute income instead of promoting growth. He wants to cut back on regulations, which are another huge tax on businesses. So if you're in business and regulation is a problem for you, and it's a problem for everybody, that's in business. Donald Trump should be the guy you vote for. He wants to make us energy independent. I mean, we need to be energy independent for a number of reasons involving national security as well as economics. He's got a trade policy that makes sense and his immigration policy makes sense. So if you're in the business community and you're not supporting Donald Trump, then you're just not paying attention. It's, it's, very, it's a very clear choice. He said he wants to roll back regulation, Harlan Hill, and she said she wants to add on things like Obamacare, add to uh, Dodd-Frank. Well, the contrast couldn't be more stark. I mean, Hillary Clinton's planning to double down on the failed policies of the Obama administration, which have given us 1% growth, you know, which have median household income down. And, 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 you know, she also wants to double down on regulation. So it just doesn't make sense to me. But what she's doing that's so effective in these ads, and I think this is why fundraising is so important, is that she's telling a story about how this impacts normal Americans. And I, I cannot wait for him to start doing that, too. You know, Maria, one other thing. You know, people, I, I should have brought this up when we were discussing immigration. There is a great YouTube video out there now. Not a lot of people have talked about it. Bill Clinton's 1995 State of the Union address. People should watch it. He sounds so much like Donald Trump and so little like Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. So wow. it's, it's, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it on my Twitter account or my Twitter uh, I'll tweet it when I get back to the office and at my computer. Tweet but it, it out, it's an tweet amazing it out clip. Andy, because we want to see it, and then I I'll retweet it. Um, because I want to, I, I, I want to watch that and see if it actually has similarities to what Donald Trump is saying. Andy, on the lighter side of things, KFC launched a fried chicken sunscreen. Oh, oh, okay, I've got it here. <laughs> 
So you got to explain this to me. Uh, gave away 3,000 bottles, made it available again on popular demand. Similarly, KFC Hong Kong came up with edible nail polish. Now, your company has provocative ads featuring attractive women, unconventional promotion campaigns. Is this the most effective way to get the customers in there? <laughs> Well, you know, the problem people are trying to address now, and it's not just, it's not just restaurants, it's everybody, is that the younger generation, the millennials, say, say people that are 18 to maybe 30 years old, they don't watch TV. So you can't run ads like you used to and expect everybody to see them on television. You need ads or you need promotions that people are going to share, something that goes out virally, something that's kind of from millennials for millennials. So people try, we, you know, our ads, we, you know, we get a lot of uh, what's called earned media impressions, which are previews on YouTube and, you know, sharing on the Internet because of the provocative nature of the ads. Yeah. So you want to do things that not only work on TV, but work in a viral sense. I got and so you. I think that's I think that's what you're seeing. It, it makes sense, but I don't know that I really am dying to put on this extra <laughs> crispy chicken oh. flavored sunscreen, <laughs> yeah. Kevin Kelly, and you love KFC. Yeah, I, see the I mean, shape. I, I love my swag, stunner shades, the smell. I mean, oh my God, I mean, this certainly this will go viral. <laughs> Andy, thank you so much, my friend. We'll see you soon, sir. Thank you. All right, up.